Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about RS-232 communication protocol. RS-232 communication protocol is one of the oldest serial communication protocol, which was developed by TIA, Electronics Industry Alliance, or TIA, Telecommunication Industry Alliance, back in 1962. Modern hardware designs use innovative serial communication protocols like USB, Ethernet, and Wi-Fi, but still RS-32 has proven to be prominent for the reason that RS-32 speed over longer distance are compared to other communication protocols are much more. Moreover, it is noise immune as compared to other communication protocol. The name RS-232, the RS stands for recommended standards. It defines the serial communication between DTE and DCE signals. The DTE is uh, called as the data terminal equipment and the DCE is called as data communication equipment. Example of DTE devices, uh, DC, uh, DTE devices is a computer and DC can be a modem. Formally, it is specified as the interface between DTE equipment and DC equipment using serial binary data exchange. Now, there are some electrical standards for the RS-232 communication protocol. The voltage levels uh, in this protocol ranges from minus 25 volt to 20, plus 25 volt. And uh, the signal voltage between plus 3 volt to plus 25 volt represents logic 1. And the signal voltage is between minus 3 volt to minus 25 represents logic 0. Whereas the control voltage signals use the negative logic. The slew rate, the change of input voltage determines the rate at which the RS-232 driver responds. This is often termed as slew rate. The RS-32 standard maintains a minimum slew rate of 30 volt per microsecond. The line impedance between the RS-232 driver and the receiver is defined as to the maximum the voltage transfer between the transmitter and the receiver. It is in the range of 3 kilo ohm to 7 kilo ohm. And the baud rate of the RS-232 communication protocol is from about 110 to 230400. Commonly the used baud rates are 1200, 4800, 9600 and so on. Communication interface. The RS-232 determines the communication between the DTE and DC using two types of connectors, namely DB9 and DB25 connectors. The D sub connectors or comes with a male and female cable. DB9 connector has nine pins and DB25 connector has 25 pins, each having their own functions as given in this list. The function or the working of RS-232 communication is almost same as UART here. Also, no clock signals are used for synchronization. Instead, the RS-232 uses a start bit, a parity bit, and a stop bit. The start bit, while the communication is being started, is kept as low, followed by some data packets, and then a parity bit. The parity bit is kept as 0 if the number of ones in the data bits are even, and it is kept as 1 if the number of ones in the data bits are odd, followed by one or two stop bits that depends on the RS-232 communication protocol. Now it follows a handshaking process and also we will see that why it is so used. Handshaking is the process of interchanging information signals between the sender and receiver. These signals build a communication link between the transmitter and receiver. And there are two types of handshaking. One is hardware handshaking and the other is software handshaking. So why do we use handshaking? To send and receive the information without the loss of data, it is necessary to maintain the robust communication between the transfer, uh, transmitter and receiver. Uh, so for that, handshaking is very much essential in RS-232 communication protocol. And uh, we will understand this uh, signal chart that how handshaking is uh, usually done in RS-232. First of all, in the initial state, the RTS line is pulled high by the DT to wake up the DC in case of uh, communication being started now. In this state, no data is transmitted. After that, DC puts the CTS line high to receive the data. This makes the DT to respond and set the DTR to the high state. Now the data transfer takes place. After completion of data transfer, both RTS and DTR are pulled low by DT. Then DC triggers and the CTS line to low state, then stops the DT to transmit the data. Hence, the communication is over. Now, we have seen that there are almost similarity between RS-232 and UART communication, but there are also some differences between them. First of all, the main difference is that the voltage levels, the voltage levels the, of RS-232 is cannot be tolerated by microcontrollers. Hence, to avoid that, UARTs are used. 
Moreover, to do the log level conversation voltages, RS232 driver IC uh, makes use of that as such an example is MAX232 is used between the UART and serial port. Advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of RS232 is that, first of all, it, is, it makes it a standard serial interface between system to system communication protocol. It is moreover simple. The hardware overhead is less than parallel communication. It is a recommended standard for short distance application. It is also noise immune as compared to other communication protocol. It is compatible with DT and DC communication and the cost of the protocol for development and maintenance is also very low. The disadvantages of RS-232 protocol is that it doesn't support full duplex communication as we saw in the case of UART and it is a single ended protocol which shifts the ground potential. Moreover, the longer cable makes it cross talk and the serial communication, hence error can and jitters can occur for communication over longer distances. Application of RS-232 are teletyper devices and embedded system for de debugging, modems and printers, some uh, handheld equipment, barcode scanners and points to sales terminals. So that's all on the RS-232 communication protocol. Thank you.